Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train-eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need, to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency, our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want. Leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. CWI prep course, Machinery Guards, Module 2, Part 7. Learning objectives. In this module, we're going to talk about general pinpoint information, machinery guards, and lockout tagout. Types of pinch point injuries include amputations, lacerations, contusions, crushing of tissue and bones, and broken bones. Rotating mechanical parts move too fast for you to escape once you have become entangled in a pinch point. Depending on the industry and the state, um, gear sprockets, sprocket chain drives, and moving parts of belts, pulley drives should be covered by regulations and have safety guards or shields. There's 50 states out there. There's the federal government. I'm not an expert on every one. I just know that, you know, generally you got to watch out for pinch points and getting sucked into things. Every year there's a couple of really nasty accidents where somebody gets crushed or pulled into some kind of auger or caught up in some kind of belt that could have been avoided. So, and as an inspector, you're going into a workplace a lot of times that isn't your workplace. So you really need to be on your toes and you know, keep track of these things. Be cognizant that you don't know what's going on there. You're not there every day. So you might be in and out for two hours and, you know, it's not ri worth risking your life or one of your limbs for something that's, you know, a few hundred bucks worth of work. So anyways, keep track of pinch points. Another important thing we need to talk about is pinch points. A pinch point is any point at which a possible, it is possible for a person or a person's body part to be caught between moving parts of a machine or between a moving and stationary part of a machine or between material and of any part of a machine. A pinch point does not have to cause injury to limb or body part, although it may cause injury. It only has to trap or pinch the person to prevent them from escaping or removing the trapped part from the pinch point. So that's a definition of a pinch point. So you got to be careful around pinch points, and um, there's a lot of them out there. So try and minimize them and stay out of them. Machinery guards. Um, this is pretty important stuff. Crushed arms, hands, severed fingers and limbs, lacerations and abrasions. The list of possible machinery-related injuries is long and horrifying. Many hazards are created by moving machine parts. Safeguards are essential for protecting workers from preventable injuries. Moving components and drive belts must be covered by guards to prevent physical contact. The purpose of machine guarding is to protect the machine operator and other employees in the work area from hazards created by ingoing nip points, rotating parts, flying chips, and sparks. Some examples of this are barrier guards, light curtains, two-hand operating devices, etc. Yeah, this is this can't be understated um, how important this is. We've all seen people that are missing fingers or arms or hear just horrible stories of somebody getting an arm ripped off. Um, a lot of these things are preventable, um, but um, and that's why we have you know guards on these things. People getting sucked into belts and all kinds of horrible things. 
So um, that's why moving components and drive belts must be covered by guards to prevent physical contact. You can't touch this. You don't want to touch it. If it's got enough horsepower to rip through a piece of steel, it'll go through your flesh or suck you in there so quick you won't know what happened. So be aware of machinery guards and understand that they're safety devices and if they're damaged they must be replaced. Um, just need to keep this in mind. Shortcuts lead to danger. Often pinch point injuries are the result of workers who are not properly trained, don't realize the dangers of machinery, or take shortcuts to get the work done more quickly, but end up injuring themselves instead. Never perform a task without proper training by taking shortcuts or bypassing procedures. The consequences could be serious. Yeah, it could be your life, could be a limb, could be a finger. So, and once again, as I said previously, your this most of these places aren't your home workplace if you're an inspector a lot of inspectors are there for a limited amount of time you go in look at something and get out so you know you need to really keep an eye on this stuff what machines have pinch points pinch points can be quite pervasive in a business and include or but not limited to such machines as metal forming machines power presses conveyors robotic machines powered rollers, assembling machines, plastic molding machinery, printing presses, powered benders, press brakes, power transmission equipment, powered doors, covers, hatches, including generally unrecognized hazards like overhead powered garage type sliding doors. There's a lot of things. Anything where you can get pinched or trapped is a pinch point. Here's a few example of nip points and pinch points. Um, I took this from OSHA 3170-02R2007. You know, belts and chain-driven equipment and things like this that, you know, should have guards on them and you should be wary of and you definitely don't want to get sucked into or get too close to. Some examples of pinch points in welding, um, resistance welding machines, welding robots, sub-arc machines, automatic arc welding machines welding and tacking fixtures. Also pinch points can be created, you know, with uh, forklifts or, you know, trucks or vehicles. So you need to be cognizant of these. Um, you know, somebody moving a piece of pipe, you don't want to get trapped and be caught in a pinch point. These can be uh, very bad for your health outcome. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA 29 code, of federal regulation CFR 1910.147 requires procedures lockout or tag out for the control of hazardous energy all machinery or equipment that is capable of movement is required to be de-energized or disengaged and blocked or locked out during cleaning servicing adjusting or setting up lockout tag out procedures apply to the control of energy during the servicing and or maintenance of machines and equipment where the unexpected energization startup or release of stored energy could cause injury. So OSHA's got rules that say, hey, if you're gonna start up machinery, if there's a possibility of the machinery getting started up while we're working on it, you need to lock it out, tag out, and you need to have a procedure for doing this. And as I've said before, I want to keep stressing is that because you're an inspector and you're going into unfamiliar situations, a lot of times you really need to look at this lockout tag out situation to make sure you don't get put in harm's way and just trust some guy that you met 10 minutes before. Oh yeah, this is Bob. I'm here to, ins you know, I'm, I'm the guy that's going to take you around the plant. Yeah, we do it this way all the time. If there's a situation that you don't think is kosher, you don't have to go into it. But anyways, you know, lockout tag out is an important point to remember because it all ties into helping prevent you getting caught in a pinch point situation or a hand crushed or some similar situation like that. Because pinch point injuries often occur when a machine is being stopped temporarily for service or cleaning, it is extremely important that the workers follow necessary procedures for lockout and tag out. Lotto, L O T O. Workers can follow guard policies for when the machine is running, but when it's stopped and the guard is removed, 
if the equipment is not de-energized, a worker is not safe. Summary. We covered general pinch point information. What is a pinch point? Why do you need to be cognizant of what it is and how it is and where it is and why it is? Um, we talked about machinery guards a little bit, and then we talked about lockout, tagout. All of these are important, and they all tie together. The pinch points, you need to understand what they are and how they can just tear a limb off in a matter of moments. Um, you also need to understand the guards, and they're there, and if the guard's missing, you probably don't want to get close to it because you could get sucked into it. And we talked about lockout, tagout, and its importance in construction and maintenance and setting things up and repair situations, which you as a CWI might be involved in. So you need to understand lockout, tagout, machinery guards, and just general pinch point information. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you've sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank, 40 bucks. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study, CWI exam. Everything's an online video course.